So one more. Shall we just get started? Uh, you know, I don't know when Rachel will have time to, to log on. Yeah, you got for him. So do we have a business meeting to start with? Are we going to, okay. Um, so it is 6.08 by my clock. Um, Lane, you're gonna have to fill me in. So uh, Lane and I met with uh, some representatives from the union last week or two weeks ago, I guess now. Um, and to talk about uh, a resolution for their grievance about um, not uh, about people who were not unavailable, staff were unavailable to work last spring, um, who's, uh, we talked about this twice in two meetings, um, who uh, health and other personal leave were taken um, because they didn't have any medical excuse or any other sort of um, verification of a of some sort of medical reason. So we what we came to with the union uh, tentatively um, was that we would use the current MOU that is existent for this year and retroactively ask those people to submit um, medical notes uh, that would give them reason to truly have not been available to work last spring. So that was they they the the union lawyers were um, amenable to that. Um, so it was just going to go to a vote for the membership. Um, we decided that seemed fair to us. It, you know, it was as best as we could um, get um, in our opinion. And so, um, you know, having not knowing definitely whether that's the agreement that um, the union membership actually voted on. It would behoove us um, to talk about whether we're willing to tentatively agree to okay that, um, that decision. So questions from anyone? Sounds pretty straightforward. Yeah, it's, so it's basically going back to, to our, our, you know, sort of decision this August, you know, the, it go abiding by CDC guidelines as to what are uh, valuable, uh, valuable, viable reasons for claiming um, high risk due to COVID um, and then getting a medical note to substantiate those claims. So, um, so we can sort of not meet before our next um, board meeting uh, on, in November, if we could tentatively agree uh, to, uh, with that, seeing if they come back with that exact agreement, if we could already, as a board, agree that we're willing to let me go ahead and sign that um, in, in, you know, lieu of everyone agreeing at the same time. So is there a motion uh, to uh, approve that tentative agreement? So moved. Any further discussion or questions? Is there a second? I second. If there are no questions, um, can we have a vote then? All those in favor? of approving the motion, uh, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, um, so then when we hear from the union, we'll let you know, and if the agreement was as we had discussed, uh, I will sign it. All right, um, that is all the business of the board, I think, is that correct, Lane? Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to uh, hand it over to you, Winton, and begin yeah. our facilitated retreat. Great. Well, nice, nice to see you all, and I, ne I need to get to know you a little bit better because we're going to be doing some major work together. I promise we'll be wrapped up by 11 tonight. Ha ha. We, we don't share that vision, do we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I, I trust you all received the agenda and some other uh, related materials. So what I like to do when uh, 
it's best if we're meeting face to face, but when we're not, it works just as well uh, to know a little bit more about you. And so at the six o'clock time where it says in one minute, share something about yourself that others may not know or that you want them to know, uh, I just think that helps with the relationship building, given all the things that uh, you all do together. Sometimes nice to know who's in the trenches with each other uh, when you're making major decisions. And usually when I, when I do these kinds of uh, meetings, I start first just to kind of break the ice. And I'll, I'll start by saying that uh, I was a, a teacher and an administrator for a number of years, retired a couple of years ago. Uh, but back early in my career, my wife and I built a post and beam home in Northfield. And in the summers, I, I built houses for other people. And now I'm finally able to, uh, to build another building on our property. I cut logs a few years ago, had them milled, and I'm putting up a, a fairly large post and beam barn right now. And uh, just getting the roof on, probably we'll finish with the roof uh, tomorrow. Uh, but I find it very satisfying. And so that's something that you probably don't know about me. Uh, so I'll, I'll leave it open as to how you'd like to go around and, and share one thing about yourselves that others may not know. And then we'll get into the meat of the, our work together tonight. Don't all jump at once. Who's brave and going to go first? I'll go ahead and start. Thank you, um, Anna. Sure. This is just a kind of throwaway one, but uh, I started going gray when I was 13 years old and uh, I'm asked weekly if A, I'm my um, children's grandmother, which I do not find amusing, uh, <laughs> and B, if I dyed it to look like this. Ah. So uh, there, something you know about me. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Who else would like to go? Don't be bashful because I'm going to pick on everybody that. tonight. Go ahead, Katja. Um, my name is Katja. Um, all of you know this, but Winton. So um, let's see. My my fact is uh, English was not my first language. I spoke German primarily until the age of five. Maybe you guessed that by my unusual name, though. So. Oh, cool. Well, I just have to say that, uh, Katja, I know a little bit about your family because uh, Peter Evans and... Uh, <laughs> And I both put, put built post and beam homes, and I helped him put his uh, his and Nancy's home up when they uh, built that in Roxbury. I was wondering when you said that you're from Northfield and you built post and beam and have been in education. I said you probably know my father in law. Yeah, Peter, Peter and I taught together at Northfield High School. Oh yeah, small yeah. world. <laughs> it is. Okay, who's next? I guess I'll go um, to the, to kind of spinning off your your comment. Um, I actually built my house here. Uh, it's not a post and beam, but we did uh, mill all the lumber, pulled the lumber off the land and built, built cool. it ourselves. Um, and I am probably a sixth generation to live right here in Brookfield around the farm. Beautiful. Is that any relation to Dean Baker? That's my uncle. Okay. I did worked with, with Dean him? also. Yep. He just yep. retired, I think two years ago. Still in North Carolina? No, no, they moved to Maine. Oh, they did. Yeah, okay. Fairfield, Maine. He was a superintendent up there. Cool. All right. Who's next? I can go next. Okay. Um, so my name is Megan, and I'm very new at this. <laughs> uh, don't pick on me too much. Um, <laughs> I guess uh, something that most people don't know about me, I used to um, ride horses, do, like endurance racing in the woods. Um, yeah, fun fact. Cool. Was that in Woodstock? It was, yes. My wife uh, was at the 30-mile checkpoint, if you're talking the 100-mile race. I did not do 100 miles, 25. <laughs> okay. Well, then she, you probably didn't see her, but she was handing out brined potatoes oh. uh, at the 30-mile 30, 30 uh, interval. Awesome. Cool. All right. Who's next? Okay, I'll go. Um, my name is Ashley Lincoln, and uh, sticking with the way you've kicked this off, um, I grew up working on a dairy farm, and my father had a sawmill. He was a school teacher uh, for four, almost 40 years, 
at the same school that I went to in Chelsea. And um, I'm going to one up Brian because I'm a seventh generation Vermonter. Well, I'm going to tie you because I'm a seventh generation Vermonter as well. And I grew up in a dairy farm in Cabot. So here we go. Okay. Who's next? He's doing the wrong thing. I'll go next. Um, I am not a seventh generation Vermonter. I was born in New Hampshire <laughs> and my parents were from New Jersey. So um, I guess the fun fact, um, in my mid twenties, I, I had been a teacher at Lamoille Union for two years. I met my husband and we decided to just sell everything. And we threw our mountain bikes in the back of a truck and we did a trip across the country kind of we went all the way down to Florida and then across the south and then kind of moseyed around in the Rocky Mountain states and ended up uh, in Oregon and we lived there for five years before returning to Vermont. Cool. I, I, I worked at your rival school at People's Academy uh, uh, back in the, let me think, uh, mid 80s to the early 90s. So every time there was a loyal people's game, they uh, each team would go uh, paint the other's uh, granite monument in front of the school and we'd have to remove the paint the next day. So I, I understand how these crosstown rivalries uh, go. Yeah, so I was at Lamoille, uh, 89, 88, 89, and 89, 90. So okay. you were there probably right around the same time. Yes, we were. Great. Who hasn't been? Me. Okay. Um, I guess my fun fact is uh, I, I like to be outside most of the time. So in college, I took a job on a dairy farm. Um, I went to Middlebury College, but I and I didn't have a car. So I rode my bike all year long throughout the winter to, about five or six six miles to a dairy farm and worked twice a day and kept my poor barn boots in my dorm hallway, which really <laughs> did not endear me to any of the people who lived on that floor. That's for sure. Uh -huh. That's a cool, cool fact. When I was the <laughs> assistant superintendent in South Burlington, I rode my bike, uh, took the bus from Montpelier and put the bike on the bus and went to my school's all year long as well, uh, except that when there was more than six inches of snow, even my studded hack of Politas didn't quite cut it. So I understand how that uh, how that goes. All right, Lane, I think you are the closer in the baseball vernacular here. I think I'm the last. Um, so 1987 um, was my first year of college, was actually here at Vermont Tech. And uh, during that year, um, I was captain of the national championship cross-country ski team and um, was also national champion for um, the relay um, that was going on at the time which was a lot of fun and then uh, I had uh, German at Colchester Vermont that was one of the languages that they offered I got through the first year and I wasn't foreign language wasn't quite my thing um but I, I loved the language and they canceled it um there were a lot of cuts going on at the time that year and so i did manage to, to finish up with two years of french following that so yeah oh well now now you all know did everyone go yeah yeah now you all know another uh, intricate fact about each other that uh, you i think you'll find that will come back to uh, play rich dividends in the future. I've always found that uh, building a relationship with a leadership team is critically important to the success of that team. So thank you. Uh, if you take a look at the agenda that I sent out, I did a little research and uh, thank you, Laura, for uh, steering me in the direction where the, uh, where the board wanted to go here. Uh, what I did is I took a look at your, at your, your mission. And before I go into that, do you also have a vision statement or you just go with your mission? because I didn't see the vision. I don't think we have a vision statement. I mean, we have the old strategic plan is also on the website, but I don't think we really have a vision statement. Uh, that, okay. Is that true, Lane, or am I incorrect about that? Uh, no, you're, uh, 
your mission kind of envelops both. Yeah. 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 And, and I actually think that's better because people get all kind of twisted up in their knickers over what's vision and what's mission and uh, yours is very straightforward. So people know what it is that you're about. And my first question is, does that mission fit where you want to go in the next three years? Do you want to get feedback from uh, your constituent stakeholder groups or do you feel like that's okay? Any thoughts on habits of mind, heart, and work? Does that still work for you? I was being quiet just to let the board talk um, in terms of the strategic piece. But um, I think one of the, the parts about the policy governance that we're under is um, these are the board's ends um, that the district is working on. Um, given the broad nature of them and the work that needs to be done, um, at least through through my work, we've kind of focused in um, more on the foundational knowledge side of things, specifically uh, mathematics, uh, ELA, and, and science at this point in time, as well as adaptability. Um, and the the goal was at least is to get those up to the thresholds um, that I've set with the cabinet, um, check with the board to make sure that that is you know acceptable. Um, and then uh, at that point in time, decide, hey, we keep pounding on these to make them better, or we start to encapsulate some more. Um, but that's kind of where, at least in with me talking, where we're kind of sitting at, at this point in time. So. Okay. Uh, yeah, how, I'll, how, feel, other ahead. board members, feel free to jump in because Winton and I have talked quite a bit about this. So I feel like I've sort of given my opinion. Um, so the rest of you guys can chime in I, I i basically i think uh said about the same thing as lane and i i did let when to know what our current sort of ideas were for um st our strategic plan the three goals that we had um which seemed to me somewhat apart from this mission but um not that that's here or there so um i agree or my opinion, um, I think this mission is fine because I still think it speaks to the role of the educated education, the body that we're trying to share with our children. Um, and I don't know if I think that our strategic plan has to link back entirely to this mission because the mission to me, this is very, like this is kind of saying a lot in my opinion. This is a pretty big mission statement. Typically they're like, three lines. And this is like four paragraphs. So mm -hmm. I think that there's a lot being said here. Um, and just my opinion is we could spend a lot of time trying to modify a mission statement. But I think this says a lot. And I think we should focus more on those strategic goals. Well, and the strategic goals would hopefully lead to success of our mission statement, right? I mean, the, yes. if we reached all of those goals, then students would be uh, excelling and, and succeeding as mm -hmm. we, as our mission states hopes for. Other, other thoughts before I pose another question to you? Well, going back to our uh, the way our board used to function, uh, if we're going to change the mission and the ends of our goals, it re our policies require that we go back out to the community and make sure we're on track. So um, that's what's a little bit strange in this process for me, having been on the board for a long time and and one of the things that we've struggled with um, and with turnover and with the way the board has operated is we've never really got clarity on where the where we are with the ends. And again, this is sort of policy governance speak, but it, it seems like um, from the time that we actually created the, 
these ends, because our mission is basically our end statement. Um, we haven't we haven't really followed through with really monitoring them in any significant way. So it's sort of like we're back at square one again. And maybe we do need to sort of reconnect with the community, even if we can't say, oh, hey, we, we accomplished these ends and now we're gonna come up with some new ends, but maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe we go back and sort of re, look at what we're doing maybe, I don't know. Well, that that uh, causes me to pose that next question now. And, and I, I asked you earlier, but I wanna seek your, uh, seek your direction here. The, one of your four goals is community public engagement. And so I think if you're, if we end up moving forward in the way that I think you're intending here, you're gonna be engaging your community about your ends and about your three other strategic goals beyond the, uh, the community engagement. So I'm just gonna pose that as a question. Is that the vision? Is that the direction that you see this going in? I mean, I guess I don't think we should tackle the ends um, just because it is such a broad group of statements. I mean, I don't think anyone's going to say that we've reached, you know, that our students already have knowledge, skills, and tools they need to be prepared for the next stage of their lives. I mean, that's an ongoing challenge that, you know, that's, that's the business of education. I think um, that's what our schools are working towards, um, you know, as, as, well as the other things, resiliency, critical thinking, et cetera. I mean, I see us, you know, tackling through smaller goals, which as Hannah says, really still are underneath this broad mission statement. Um, that, you know, I think, you know, we, we need to take something for granted. And to me, the ends are those things that we currently can still take for granted. Mm -hmm. Okay. In your, at your school board meetings, am I hearing you say that you're not monitoring ends at each board meeting? Yes, we are. You are, we're, okay. We're having ends reports and yes, okay. we are. We had a, a presentation last month um, by Lane and the month before by the high school teachers. Yes, we have ongoing okay. um, monitoring, yeah. Okay, all right, well, let me make the assumption that Laura is speaking on behalf of the board. Unless someone has other ideas, we'll focus solely on the, th the three other goals other than public engagement. I think, you know, as we, our board talked about, um, is that we think by using community engagement, we will develop our goal, our strategic goals. So okay. we will practice that. Correct me if I'm wrong, the rest of you, but um, that was what we decided, talked about a few months ago. Um, that that's sort of a means to an end. Okay. Yeah, I think when we talked about it before, it was uh, that community engagement was probably a, a uh, one of our weak traits. And we were thinking we would want to kind of set up a philosophy of how to do it but it wouldn't, wasn't really a strategic goal. But if we could do that, it would help us with the other three goals that we had. All right. Well, I'm looking at, is your, I didn't find your strategic plan other than the PowerPoint. Did I, did I miss something? Do you mean the current one? Yes. Uh, yeah, it's a, it from it was from uh, 2017 to 2020. Yes, it's on our website. It's quite lengthy. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And as I said, I think I told you on the phone, we did not create that. That was uh, created by our uh, the superintendent and the uh, I don't know some administrative people. So this is the first time the board has done strategic planning. Okay. Well, I th I think it makes sense to. Uh, look at kind of past, present, and future. 
Um, I don't know if I have the ability, do I have the authority, either Lane or Laura, to uh, put up the PowerPoint presentation? Or do, or do you have that? Uh, yeah, you. Uh, it's just uh, if you hit present view, it'll okay. ask, you know, what part of your screen that you want everybody to see. Um, and then you just click on that and it should go, it should go. Um, present now is on that little banner at the bottom towards a little bit towards the right. So if you move your mouse down towards the bottom. Are you seeing it now? No. Uh, nope. Okay. I'm sharing my entire screen, but oh, maybe it's show all. No. Let's Are you see. seeing it now? Nope. No. Um, you can try emailing it to me. I might be able to pop it up. Okay. Make, make sure I got the one that you're looking at. Let me open up the. Actually, go to go to your website, and I just copied it from the website. So if you want to click into it, and uh, present from your side, that works fine too. Let me see if I can find it. Not on the computer I normally use, so it takes me oh, a second. Okay. While Lane is is looking for that, uh, what I think I'd like to do is uh, go through and just tag certain components of the existing strategic plan that you'd like to at least probe or consider in the future, and then we can identify those that um, we're not interested in, in pursuing in the future. And what I'm looking at right now is it's a big star and it talks about where are, where are you now? How did you get there? Examine your identity. It says conduct a SWOT analysis. So you did a SOAR. Uh, SOAR and SWOT are similar kinds of things, except SOAR is a bit more aspirational than SWOT, which tends to be more of a business model. Uh, where do you wanna go? Establish a time frame. set objectives, decide how we get there, and then communication and feedback. All right, let's see if I got this. Susan just popped in. Uh, I do have this. Let me see if I can get it out, open it up. Okay. Uh, uh, too many menus. Good evening, Susan. Good evening, everybody. I apologize for being late. Oh, you were busy with uh, with another school district, and that's okay. There we are. All right, go through about 10 slides, Lane. Now, up, go back a little bit. One more back, right there. So this is what uh, you currently are uh, operating under as far as these departments. And well, I see the center of that circle needs to change to OSSD. So that uh, that will be a change. Uh, the, these, these arenas, are these the departments you're now operating under? Uh, no. Um, do I have my microphone on here? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if they ever had a human resources department. We We do not currently um so i don't even know why that's on there okay good evening rachel uh, so we need to make a change there uh, lane what slide is that uh eight? slide eight yep okay all right go to nine all right i think we can just skim through here uh, I, I'm assuming your learning management system is already operational? Uh, no, um, that was started at the very end of the previous superintendent's tenure and um, was not, was basically at the very fledgling stages. Um, when I came in and sat down and talked with the cabinet, um, the tool that had been chosen 
for that purpose was not the one that they wanted or that they needed or that fit in with the big uh trying to get my brain working here for thinking back three years ago it didn't fit in to support the work that they were heavily engaged in that was mandated by the state which was the graduation proficiencies and the standard based um cards and so we actually um chose another software package which isn't really a learning uh, management system um, that provides those functions um, okay. i forgot the name of the software that they, they were looking at but we needed something that would encapsulate those two functions the graduation proficiencies and uh, the um, standards-based uh, report cards and so we, we went with that because the purpose of this learning management system was to to fulfill that function i think haiku might have been the what they were looking at I think I saw Possibly. somewhere in the, in the background. Yeah. All right. Uh, are your PLCs uh, up and running? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. And uh, you talked about ELA. So it sounds like, uh, yeah, your math and ELA are still uh, moving forward. And middle yeah. school structure is one of your goals, I think. Yeah. Um, and, and we've actually, there's been a considerable amount of work um, in that area already. Um, we actually have uh, provided a stipend to have basically a middle school assistant principal um, calling the head of lower grades that is actually overseeing the development of a true middle school program within the high school program. So Okay. And is that grade seven and eight? That's grade seven and eight. Currently, we had had some discussions about bringing the sixth grade up um so that it would be a true middle school the sixth seventh and eighth grade to free up some space in the elementary schools so that we had space to continue building our preschool programs that we've been building <clears throat> okay all right go the, to the next slide uh communications so i've uh, oop, go, i when i came in um i went to school messenger um as a means of actually being able to reach out to the community with um, all the initiatives that we're working on as well as just the important emergency updates um, for the community when we have them um so uh that piece at least has been engaged okay anything else to jettison uh, let me read through volunteer expert visitors in school legislative uh, legislative shadow days. I have no idea what that is. Um, community learning conferences. Everything in the red dots is already happening. Okay. Implement uh, elementary report card, the common court. That is already done. Um, Proficiency-based graduation requirements is done. Um, research and implement. We did implement a, a software system to support the proficiency-based graduation requirements, um, but it wasn't the one that they started with. Um, the website was completed, the new website, um, the year that I started, um, the old superintendent completed that. Um, signs and stationery have been updated. Um, policies and procedures are always, um, it's ongoing that they're updated. One of the big things that we're working on now is um, the board just revamped all the policies that come from federal guidance and state guidance. Um, I'm working on the protocols at the school levels um, for conducting those policies. That's something that they didn't have a lot of prior to. Okay. Um, you, I, I, I reviewed all those, and those look like they're very current and good yep. for good for you all. Do you have uh, separate policy governance policies? Yes. And are they on the website? Uh, yes. Because I couldn't find them. They should be they, under. Oop, go ahead. Yeah, they're they're under the board. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. So is this, do, is a review of this, just to interrupt, I'm sorry, but is this um, something that we can do outside of this retreat, you know, or is this essential for moving forward is to go over our last um, strategic plan, in your opinion? Well, I was thinking I might have, uh, maybe Lane and I could do some side uh, work and just, uh, knock off the pieces that are already uh, in place and then leave the uh, the others for 
consideration moving forward. Um, if that's how you'd like to go, I think that will streamline this portion of uh, tonight's agenda. Yeah, and I did a, a very detailed review of this about a month back, and 95% okay. or more of this is complete. Um, there are still some outstanding pieces, um, some some of which um, changed because of mandates and what, but the majority of it is complete. Okay. Is that agreeable with the board then to uh, uh, work off Lane's updated uh, PowerPoint or presentation? I'm assuming it's PowerPoint. Can, can I? This is really confusing for me um, because. We have been operating in a way where we are we are looking at outcomes as a board, or at least we used to. And now I, I'm just confused with how we're moving into looking at operations or how the school, how the superintendent is going to accomplish the outcomes. And our policies have been more aimed toward monitoring outcomes and making sure that those outcomes happen and not figuring out how those how it's going to actually happen and so uh, i i find this process is is confusing for me okay you're exact exactly right and the board's role in policy governance is one step removed from the day-to-day -day operations. My question, and the, I, what I'm doing is I'm moving towards the design team and I'm, I'm needing to know, does the board wanna be the design team for the strategic plan? Or do you want to, if you've had a chance to look at the stakeholders that sit on this design team, do you want that to be a school and community stakeholder collaboration? Because if the board is the design team, we'll have to get down in the weeds and do this kind of work. I mean, I guess the question then would be, what do you typically see boards? What do you see as the role of the board in this? Because I guess that it seems like there's a little bit of wiggle room if the board, from what you're saying. so. Um, what do you see traditionally boards, like the role that a board plays in this type of process? Well, I will say that there are fewer boards that are policy governance boards in the state. And so traditional boards often like to spend time, I'll say down in the minutia. Uh, policy governance boards don't. Uh, so maybe it makes some sense to switch to the uh, VSBA strategic planning proposal that I sent you and go to the, the last page. You all should check, should have that and take a look at the design team member roles and expectations. And you'll see 13, 13 total members and you'll see the stakeholder representation that only has one school board member sitting on that on that team. And if that's how you'd like to move forward, then we don't need to spend any time uh, looking at the old strategic plan. I guess, I mean, I, I see these team representatives uh, when we previously have talked about um, community engagement, it was not necessarily saying, well, these types of people are the ones we want to participate, but just being more open-ended and inviting whoever would like to participate in um, participating. So I have a little bit of a hesitation, say, well, I want one of these and one of those, um, mm -hmm. rather than being more, you know, open-ended, you know, for whoever wants to be a participant. Well, let me then take that to the next level. Look at the feedback group roles and expectations underneath that. And that's where you get everyone. And they either participate through Google Form surveys or they participate in Google Meet forums and uh, generally do that with like stakeholder uh, roles at, at the same meeting. And if you if you look at the, I think those roles are there. You know, they're actually back in the beginning. Uh, I have uh, six, six stakeholder groups that we reach out 
and solicit feedback with focused questions. And one of them, uh, one of the groups would be community nonprofit leaders. So I'll, I'll give you an example of how these processes usually go. Yeah, well, I say usual because usually it's not virtual, but now we're virtual. So let me play out a scenario. If you had a design team that helps work with me to shape questions and design the process, and you empower that team on behalf of the board, they would come together, uh, they would help develop questions, they would help uh, process the data that comes out of focus forums, focus groups, feedback groups, and they would be the team that uh, starts in roughly January and ends in May, and they would work on uh, developing the process, analyzing the data that comes out of feedback from your community engagement, and then helps to craft and draft the strategic plan. The feedback groups, let's just say on January 15th, we, we bring together uh, uh, administrators would be one of the stakeholder groups. And in the first meeting, if you look in the, in the first page of this, the proposal that I started with the last page, look at the first page and look in January, no, actually February, uh, forum series 1A, host the teacher staff forum. It would be one hour in likely Google Meet and another day that same week, uh, I would facilitate a parent uh, feedback forum and we would have likely eight to 10 people um, in the teacher staff forum and eight to 10 parents in their separate feedback forum. And we would pose six to eight questions in a focus forum uh, configuration where one of the questions might be, and in using your goals, might be focused on high school academics. And I would probe, that and get feedback from uh, the first group was uh, teacher staff and the second group would be parents and I would spend an hour with each of the groups and then process the data the next uh, forum series 1b would be uh, students I'd host a student forum and then the, the fourth forum would be a business leader forum same questions uh, later in the month of February 1C would be host separate administrator forum, and then a nonprofit community leader forum. Again, one hour each with six to eight focus questions and collectively process the data and the feedback that those stakeholder groups are providing to the board and to the administrators. Uh, so that's, that's how we might shape the, the process. The question is how many uh, focus areas uh, might we move forward? And I'm just going to make an assumption here that you'd like to hear about high school academics from uh, stakeholders. You you want to hear about school climate from stakeholders, and you want to hear about middle school transition from the stakeholders. And that that would provide the foundation for moving your strategic plan forward. Again, that's only my assumption. That's how I've done it with other school districts. Talk to me about how that feels for you, uh, what you don't know and what you'd like to know. Um, so I, just, I have a question. Um, I actually appreciate the idea of reaching out to these different groups, having that structured time. But my question is, um, we did some of this pre-work that you included and we've mentioned during this evening on those three goals, the fourth being kind of a consistent community input, the fourth of goal. So you're suggesting that you would basically take the foundation that we already have, and then we're going to reach out to all of these different community groups through very um, tight focus group type of situations mm -hmm. to see if they agree, if they have additional information. Um, if that's a yes, then my next question is, 
um, I because I feel like this could go so far astray depending on who you have. I mean, you start bringing in 64 different people, you're going to get 64 different opinions. Mm -hmm. So my question is, is the work we've started, is that the foundation that we're leaping off from now to garner feedback from others? Or are we taking a clean slate and going to gather what, what any person within this group thinks is important? That's what Laura and I talked about, and she encouraged me to develop a process that takes the three goals that the board, the fourth is an, is an assumption that public engagement is how you're going to do it. So setting that aside, uh, you want to hear from the community about high school academics, middle school transition, and high school climate. And I can shape those questions around those three topic areas. So let, let me just stop there and see, does that fit for the vision of where you think this should go? I, I like the sounds of this because it seems like we're going to be reaching out. We've sort of come up with some ideas of things that might need to be addressed, but we're you know, that's based on our personal, I mean, experience, sort of what we've heard, um, but this will allow us to really reach out and get feedback from everyone that's involved in the whole system, which I think is great. Um, the one thing that concerns me a little bit is these are very focused toward the older students. Um, there's nothing, we don't really have anything that's oriented toward the elementary school, but perhaps when we engage with the stakeholders, we'll hear, we'll hear more or, you know, if we're looking at high school academics, that means you've been preparing through elementary school, so maybe um, th that will uh, give us some feedback there. Okay. One of the one of the focused questions that I traditionally use in planning processes like this is the stop start continue question uh, that you might have reviewed in the first page of uh, the proposal and that is what should the Orange Southwest Supervisory Union uh, Supervisory District stop start or continue doing to prepare students to be contributing members of society, skillful workers and lifelong learners. And that is a that's a pretty rich and pretty wide open uh, question to stakeholders. Uh, that could get at the elementary piece uh, very well. You're going to get a lot of data in uh, in forms where 50 to 100 people come together, which is how I've traditionally done it. I use post-it notes and people just write, continue. They have as many post-it notes as they like. They generally have about 10 theme areas where they post it under a, a stop column, a start column and a continue column. And then there are facilitators that uh, begin to amalgamate and, and, and uh, place like statements together. And that's when themes begin to emerge. It's a little trickier virtually, uh, but I think we can do it. Uh, but that's how it, uh, how I ordinarily have uh, have done that. So the question, and thank you, Anne, for raising that. How does the board feel about including a question like that with all stakeholder groups? I think that would be a fine question to start with. The only thing that you know kind of concerns me, and Lane will probably, you know, can agree that. Most of the the public forums that you have out, it's usually the same people that come to every forum, and in at the board level, the only time we really have any contact from the public is when they have a specific problem or issue. You know, we don't normally have a lot of you know input, so I'm not sure. I mean, how how would you set up these focus groups? Would you specifically ask people to attend or would you you know just kind of leave it open for anybody 
both, and I'll tell you how, uh, I'll tell you what the options are. The design team helps to uh, reach out to what I call key decision makers in each of those stakeholder groups and make sure that uh, those people are targeted and not just a, a, you know, a single uh, philosophy, but a very broad uh, cross-section of individuals. And those are people that we actually work with directly. But when I mentioned Google uh, Form, we put that out to anyone and we make it available through the newspaper, through Facebook, through uh, Front Porch Forum, many, many different ways to elicit feedback from anyone who would like to uh, participate. And they just, uh, they include their ideas in a online uh, Google form, and that automatically compiles into data that the design team then uses the process. And that gets, uh, merge with the focus group uh, ideas and feedback so that you get people who might want to be more intimately involved and then you get some folks that maybe will answer a question or two, uh, but it's very comprehensive and targeted to as many people as, uh, as we can reach. So other thoughts or issues before I move forward a little bit? All right. So it sounds like you'd like to probe with focus groups around the three board goals. And just give me a thumbs up if that's if you think that's a good idea. OK. Uh, and how are you with the stop, start, continue question to those six stakeholder groups? Thumbs up on that. And I should tell you, I don't know if you use thumbs, but thumb on the side is I'm not really sure. And thumbs down is I don't like it. And thumb is the only digit we're gonna to use tonight and I'll just leave it at that, okay? Um, so that's very helpful because that gives us a direction for moving forward. Go back to this document, the first page, the proposal. Now I don't wanna make an assumption that you wanna move forward without asking you the right question. Given what I've said so far, does it make, for, make sense to move forward with a uh, comprehensive strategic planning process uh, that will shape as, as we go and that uses a design team to guide the process? I'd like to hear what your thoughts are. Or do you want to just vote on it? How, how do you want to move forward? I'd love to hear from a few of you, just your thought process of, you know, how you envision yourself being involved in this going forward. I think that's definitely the, the, the way to go only because I don't know about everybody else, but I don't have a lot of, you know, planning experience. So I'm, you know, more willing to help with, you know, give my opinion and, and do it in what I can, but definitely have someone kind of guide us through it would be the best way. What okay. I like about the idea of a design team um, is that it give you you're using the word stakeholders and that makes me think these are people who will who will feel some ownership over it which is and over the the district as a whole which is in my opinion what is missing for our community engagement. Um, people feeling like they have a seat at the table, like they have ownership. So by making the design team have such a broad um, uh, membership, uh, that's attractive to me. Okay. Other thoughts before I put it to a vote? Okay. With thumbs in whatever direction, those of you that uh, would like to have a design team with roughly the configuration of 13 members that I identified in the end of that proposal, uh, show your support with a thumbs up or a thumb on the side or a thumb down. Okay, all right. We need to talk a little bit more about 
uh, do you want the majority of the board says design team. The question is, do you want the board to be the design team or do you want that stakeholder group to be the design team? Do you have, do you have some concerns about giving up some authority to a design team like that? It's a, an amalgamation of, uh, in fact, look at your proposal again, now that we're getting to a decision point. The last page of that proposal, it would have one school board member, uh, one community or non, community member or nonprofit leader, uh, one elementary parent, one middle high school parent, one high school student, uh, five teachers, one from each of your schools, including the career center, one elementary administrator, one middle high school administrator, one business leader for a total of 13 total members. And understand that as, as we decide on who these members of the design team should be, that will also have the representation from all the communities. So if we had an elementary parent from Brookfield, uh, we might have a middle high school parent uh, from Braintree and, and, and do it that way. I do, in, in that list, I do feel like it would be important to separate middle and high school out because I do feel one of our big focuses is this middle school um, creating that middle school. And I think that if you had just a middle school parent, you know, on that, as part of that team, they might not understand what happens at high school level or vice versa, a high school parent who might not, you know, be in touch with what's happening on the middle school level. So that's the only one that I feel, and I don't know how others feel, it may be separating that out. So you have a representative from parent from each of those, from both of those kind of student populations. Okay, that's a good good uh, good suggestion. Any other sh uh, reshaping of that uh, team representative? Uh, Katja and Laura, did you have any other concerns about a design team in general? Um, I mean, my only one. I, I mean, I guess not not as much. My only one would be the school board representation um, and just making sure either if there's a way to um, rotate that or make sure that those who, if there's you know numerous school board members who'd like to be a part of that, if there's a way to kind of involve um, those of us who are interested in being involved, um, or again, maybe rotate so the people who are on the committee have a way to get to know each of the school board members. I don't know. I have a question for you. Um, is it typically difficult to, you know, like I see five teachers and I, I just wonder, and, and two administrators, is it typically difficult to get those people to um, give up their, you know, evening time for something like this over a period of months? It hasn't been, uh, but again, I've done this uh, probably 50 or 60 times, but I've, I've never done one virtually. And so I don't, I don't know for sure that's gonna be like. In some respects, it's easier because you don't have to go out to a meeting. You just go to your computer and you're there. Uh, I've done other kinds of uh, leadership development activities virtually, but not the strategic planning. Uh, so in the past, design team has worked very well. Yeah, I, the only caution that I would throw out there is just not to forget that we are operating under COVID and the workloads are nearly double what they normally are, especially when we're transitioning back and forth, um, depending upon the local conditions. Um, so I think that this process, uh, having run one or two of these myself, I think this process, you know, would work fine under normal circumstances. It will probably work fine under COVID as well, but I just want to throw that caution out there that there's that unknown um, just because of the extra workload that's on folks. Okay. Any other thoughts? Okay. Well, it sounds like the majority of folks think it's a good idea to move forward with a design team. Uh, kind of the next, the next level here would be to begin to identify a process by 
which to, to solicit uh, participation uh, from members that fit these stakeholder groups. So be thinking kind of in the back of your mind, uh, who, are, who are the right people here? And what's the process look like? Uh, do we devolve that uh, to Lane to reach out uh, through uh, invitations, both internal and external? Internal meaning within the school district, external meaning the parents and community leaders and, and the like. Does that, without throwing too much on you, Lane, does that, uh, you know, put, put that to Lane and his team to figure out how to do that? Does that make sense? And then depending upon how the, um, the board feels, um, this is something that we could easily bang out in a cabinet meeting. Um, and then, uh, you know, give the feedback to the board on, you know, the folks that we're thinking about. And then if, if the board is happy, we could go ahead and do the invites. <laughs> yeah, I think we, we have, you know, we represent the three different communities quite well with a wide range of um, you know, knowledge of different teachers and not uh, different parents and, and stuff like that. So I think we, you know, the, the board could be a good reservoir of, of ideas of parents and, um, you know, business leader and things like that. But I think we would definitely love to have your help uh, inviting, you know, administration and uh, teachers. Okay. So then it sounds like it'll be a two-pronged attack. Lane and, and the administrative team work on a process that comes back to the board and board members as well with your relations in the community also reach out to folks uh, I would I would caution you not to promise anybody that they're on, but just find out a list of volunteers that then can come to the board and you make a decision about uh, kind of the diversity of people that uh, that would be coming to uh, to represent you on the design team. Does that make sense to have the final ultimate decision uh, be uh, at the board level? If that's a yes, just nod your head or thumbs up. Okay. All right. That's good. All right. So uh, going back to your first page, does January seem like an okay time to start this process? We're looking at the end of October. Uh, November, December would be identify design team. Also, we need to uh, identify the feedback groups. So it's not just getting representatives for the design team, it's also inviting uh, individuals to participate in the feedback groups. And so as you come across individuals, I, I often go back to a realtor uh, cliche, it's three to eight to motivate. And what that means is three to eight exposures by individuals in your community. They hear about it through Front Porch Forum. They hear about it from a school board member. They hear about it from an administrator. Something goes out to all parents in a uh, school newsletter. It's on a website. Uh, it's in the newspaper. Uh, so when it becomes a crescendo of they're, they're getting uh, this information from a broad cross-section throughout their community, they understand that there's, there's a big deal going on at the, at the school district, and it's a public engagement process that's soliciting feedback. Um, and here's your chance, folks, to let the board know uh, what your thoughts are, good, bad, or ugly. Uh, so that's when I, when I use that cliche, that's what realtors are about. They use all kinds of Zillow and uh, different company websites to be able to um, advertise a house that's for sale. And we're advertising, we want to hear your voice in the community. And I saw that in your board goals. Uh, so this is just a process that, that gets you closer to that. All right, well, I think I, we're at 7.07. .07. I built in a, a, a 10 minute break. I think any, uh, any good uh, facilitator gives folks a little bit of time to breathe a little bit. Uh, 
So I'm going to give you a choice here. The choice is we can uh, we can continue on or we can take a 10 minute break. I promise uh, I won't wrap up at 11. I'll wrap up at nine. I just wanted to make sure you were listening early on. Uh, you want to take a 10 minute break and just stretch your legs and come back at, uh, let's say, 715. Not quite to 10, but let's come back at 715 and we'll get get back at it. I'll see you uh, 715. Not everyone's back, but I'm going to start anyway. Uh, I'm going to do a simulation. Uh, as a, I want us to assume that a design team has shaped the process and that we are in February and we're on the first page of the proposal. And you all are teachers or staff members at one of the schools. Uh, pretend like this is a a feedback group, and I'm going to I'm going to pose a couple of questions for you and just give you an idea of what a focused or feedback group uh, conversation would be like virtually. So we're going to use the stop start continue, and so welcome group, uh, thank you for uh, participating. I know that you're all teachers and staff members at one of the schools. Uh, what do you think that the Orange Southwest uh, super, uh, school district, what do you think the school district should do uh, to stop doing, start doing, or continue doing? And so I'd like one of you to volunteer. What do you think the school district should stop doing uh, in the future? Anyone can respond to that. Everything we're doing is fine. All right, let's go to what do you think the school district should start doing? To prepare students to be contributing members of society, skillful workers, and lifelong learners. What should we start doing? And what I might do here, if I had a lot of uh, dead air time, I might say, look at the three goals that uh, I have prepared for you. And the board is interested in uh, middle school transition. They're interested to know what you're thinking about high school academics. And they're interested in knowing, uh, what is your third one? High school climate. What should the high school do to do differently or start doing around school climate. Again, we're in a simulation here, so think about your teacher or staff member and you're focused on high school climate. What would you like to see the school start doing? I know. I'm not going to you guys a break in the future. You come back and it's hard to get your engine started here. <laughs> I would say some teachers would say we need to get our equity committee up and running and um, really work on uh, equity issues throughout the entire district. Some teachers would say that, I'm guessing. Okay. That's what we're doing, right? We're guessing what staff yeah. teachers yep. might, might say. Yeah. All right. Someone uh, else. Oh, well, Go ahead. Wait is um better preparation uh there are some kids who are not on ieps who are not reading at the right at their they're reading at a third or fourth grade reading level and it's really hard to to um, teach a content level class if you have people who can't read okay and so just to fast track this a little bit uh, taking Ann's uh, posed question or thought around equity committee, uh, what I might ask is, how many of the rest of you feel, how many of you support what Ann said around uh, starting an equity committee? Just give me a thumbs up. Okay. And remember, thumb on a side if you don't really know and thumb down if you don't really like it. So that's an example of 
how I would work with the uh, the stakeholder group of students and staff. I would I would operate in the same way with the other five groups, and we would go through an hour's worth of time, and I would ask about kind of pros and cons, and I would probe uh, some of the issues that emerge. And often I would try to bring that to some consensus. Uh, doesn't mean unanimous support. It just means consensus and uh, that you could support it. It may not be your favorite, uh, but that's part of kind of the dynamic of how a feedback group would operate. And so we'd have six or eight questions in an hour, and I would have a scribe working with me uh, that keeps notes, and then we would, uh, we would uh, compile the other five group notes and data into an evolving uh, theme and look for kind of cons consistent themes throughout the different stakeholder groups. And that would help us uh, to, to show goals or to show uh, feedback that begins to emerge. So my next question, go out of this role play. You're no longer teachers or staff. In fact, you don't want to be teachers and staff in COVID because Lane just told us they have to work twice as hard now because they're either in school or they're at home. Uh, let me ask you the next question. Looking at the first page of your proposal again, you'll see that there are six uh, stakeholder groups and different uh, feedback groups that are, operate in feedback forums. Uh, the first one is teachers and staff. Should they be in a forum together? Give me a thumbs up if you think that's good. Okay. No, oh, we don't think that's good. Okay. Do you want teachers and staff to be separate? So can I just ask a clarifying question? Yeah. What do you mean by staff? You mean, I would mean like the people in the in the in the lunchroom, custodians? Uh I would drivers. say your your professional staff uh, would be your teachers. Your non-professional staff would be aides, paras, bus drivers, uh, kitchen staff, custodians. Um, so I'm seeing a little bit of concern oh. about having having them all in the same group. I would worry that your professional staff may not speak as freely or they might not oh. feel like they have the same voice that a teacher does. So I would, I mean, you can have lots of meetings. Uh, I would prefer to see those groups separated so they feel like that they could speak freely about conditions or perceptions on moving forward. Okay. Uh, show me your thumb support level with separating teachers from uh, non-professional staff. Thumbs? All right, consider it done. The next group are parents. So I don't think there's any concern about parents unless you wanted to hear an elementary parent voice, a middle school parent voice, and a high school parent voice. Do you see them all lumped together or do you see them separate? I think you'd want to separate the elementary from the middle high school, but maybe not. Uh, that's where what I would think. They might be a little bit different. I would lump them together because <clears throat> okay. even though they have different immediate issues, they ultimately want to have the same goals. Oh, yeah, that's true. Okay. Yeah, just a more... wide representation, though, because we do have three very, especially at the elementary level, we have three very distinct schools. So I think you'd want to make sure that you have representation of parents from each elementary school involved. Okay, that that would be a given. The question is, all elementary parents in one feedback group and another feedback group in middle and high school parents together. And I, we're kind of split right now. So help help me bring this to some consensus. I'm in favor of them being combined. I think they could inform each other so well, as long as there's diverse representation um, in terms of which parents are making up the, the group. 
Yeah, it might work if we did it town wide. So for instance, you know, elementary through high school parents um, in each town, and then we would be able to have, you know, different, the distinctive elementary school um, constituencies separate. Okay, now remember that there's two ways to elicit feedback. One is in focus feedback groups, face-to-face uh, -face for an hour with each topic. And the other is online uh, Google form. Just, it's a one-way uh, submission of your feedback. There's no dialogue with that. It's just, you chunk it in there and you push the button and we, we begin to compile it. So you can have those people that are more directly involved and those that are just sending it in from outside. I think so be our... Go ahead, Brian. I would think it would be best to have them all together only because um, sometimes I don't think that the elementary school parents know what's really going on with the high school parents and vice versa. And I think probably if you had them all together, they could at least, you know, either um you know they could communicate between the two of them the groups to to know what's coming or or kind of explain where where they were at that time okay and you might have some folks that have kids in middle and high school that also are in elementary as well i think it just also uh, the jump on brian's it helps with the cohesion of like you know, moving through the district rather than switching schools, I think, which is kind of the, the feeling right now for a lot of um, families. So creating that, you know, kind of generalized cohesion between the district schools would help. And you're able to facilitate it in a, in a good way in that kind of a meeting too, making sure they have all. Okay, so I'm hearing a little bit of leaning towards combined elementary, middle and high school together. Uh, can we Can we live with that? Okay. All right. So together. All right, go to the next uh, page. And, oh no, excuse me, the bottom of that page. Uh, students, do you want just high school students? Do you want middle and high school students? Do you want elementary students in focus groups? What, what's your pleasure? I think all levels of students. I think I think elementary students can. It may be on an elementary level, but you can get a feel for, for sort of what they are thinking, and I think student voices is really important. I'm keep keeping quiet just because this is kind of a boring thing. But on the student side, I think um, alumni would be important, especially recent alumni. Okay. Uh, do you think that middle and high school students together will work or should those be separate? I personally don't. Okay. So separate middle and high school. And I would think in that vein, then probably have elementary unique and separate as well. All right, Lane, I'm, I'm just kind of imagining here as you have the conversation with the cabinet that uh, what I'll do is I'll print this up and as we begin to think about, and for the board as well, as we begin to think about the participants in these forums, uh, how we're going to invite them. And that will be something that your principals, I think, will have uh, uh, quite a bit of uh, contribution to, uh, to that process. All right, the next is a business leader. You want to just put it out to like chambers of commerce, rotary, um, just a general lumping business leaders together. What's the alternative to that? Well, I have a separate stakeholder group of uh, nonprofit and community leaders. So the Rotary might pick up community leaders, 
uh, again, they could, many of these stakeholder groups wear more than one hat. So you could have a parent that is a business leader, you could have a teacher who's a parent. Uh, so sometimes they're separate and distinct and sometimes they're not. It's just making sure that you're getting a voice from a broad variety of internal and external stakeholders. So when I, when I throw out to you the, the business leader, who comes to your mind? Who's a key uh, influencer in your communities who owns a business, manages a business? Uh, just brainstorm for a minute. Who do you think fits in that category? Would VTC be a business? I think of um, applied research, of um, LED dynamics. Um, you know, I think out, I, I don't know if they have to all be in like a Randolph Brookfield brain tree, but then you also have um, GW Plastics. I was so thinking of that. The, the manufacturing. But I do think that the reality also is that your nonprofits are a large part of your hiring. And I don't know if I think those two groups could be separate um, because I don't know if you're going to get, I, I feel like they're, they're not really separate on the map where we live. Um, and it should just be combined because VTC is nonprofit. Um, you have oh, Gifford, um, you know, but then you look at our economic um, development officer, uh, Josh Jerome. I mean, there's, there's a lot of people within the town government, too, that I think we'd want to be talking about. So yeah, I see I these two groups together. Okay. Uh, and it seems to me community leaders, there's such overlap with the two groups that Ashley just mentioned that it would all those three would have to be together. There's just they're just intermingled. OK. I, I want to just being in the nonprofit world, I just the not I, I don't want to um, narrowly think about that world in terms of business because I'm thinking about parent child centers. I'm thinking about Clara Martin um, that aren't necessarily they're not businessy. Um, but I think a, a really important voice in the process. So I'm not advocating for separating them, but I do want to think about them separately um, when mm -hmm. brainstorming who would make up the group. Well, given, given the list so that you rapidly uh, rattled off here, uh, I sometimes see them having a different mission and a different focus. And remember, there's only six or eight uh, participants in each of the uh, feedback forums. So if you had separate business leaders in one forum and nonprofit leaders in another, you pick up your, your town clerks, you pick up your select board members, you pick up, uh, you know, regional planning commission, uh, your nonprofit uh, Clara Martin centers and all of those. And I think those tend to be a little bit different. And I, I think if you merge them together, you're going to lose uh, the breadth of voice that you might have by keeping them separate. I guess I have a clarifying question then. I thought these feedback forums were wide open, but you're saying these you're you're asking six to eight people, and that's that? Just six to eight people in each one? Well, there's two ways to do it. Each question, you could have a different six or eight people. So if we're going to go through uh, three levels of forum around your board goals, you could have your first uh, and let's just say there's 10 in each group. So you, your first four, series of forums would have 60 voices in it if you had 10 in each forum. And let's say that the first forum just asked the question, uh, what should the school district stop, start, or continue doing? You get 60 voices. You have an, an, the next level of questions gets at your board goals, which are high school academics. And so you have a second group of 60 people that you'd hear a voice from that go through a forum series 2A through C. And then your third would take you through uh, middle school transition. And that would be a separate group of 60. Uh, but the, the reality is to be able to manage a process that big, uh, you're inviting 
people all the time and it's harder to uh, maintain the continuity. Remember that the Google form gathers data from outside of the face-to-face -face process. So there's two ways to get at that. Um, and I'm happy to talk, I'll, I'll do it any way that you folks think is the right way to go. Um, but you, you feasibly could be um, interacting with 180 people um, if you have separate stakeholders in each one of those feedback series, or you could have 60 people uh, consistently through all three of those questions. So I guess I have a, a follow-up question. So I thought there was just one feedback forum for each group, but you're saying there's three feedback forums for each group where each one is revolving around a single question. Yes. Okay, wow. Uh, you can do it either way. You, you could have the same group respond to the three different questions in three different meetings, or you could have, or you could have just one and have a, have a single question and do, uh, let's just say you do the stop, start, continue question, and I build into that forum uh, your targeted board goals, which are around high school uh, academics, around middle school transition, and uh, high school climate. Uh, that's that be hmm, I don't know that's I think that's too much. So uh, can I ask a clarifying question? Would you sure. also be doing a general Google form out to whomever? Yes. In addition to these focus. Yes. Okay, perfect. That's that's great. So you get you get different levels of participation. You just get it on, I say paper. You get it on electronically with no dialogue on the Google form, but you get the interaction in the feedback forums and you build on each other's uh, thoughts and issues and point of view, and it's more collaborative than it is just a dump, so to say, of information. Well, I would think that if we could get 60 people involved, we'd be doing good, but 180 might be stretching it from what we could get even people just to volunteer for. Well, that that's that's my concern. Having okay. done this with um, trying to unit in the in the group that was working on unifying the district. Okay. Um, we did. I mean, and we reached out a lot to sort of the community who we thought were the sort of the community movers and shakers. And it was, it wasn't easy to get people to commit. So, um, but this is a little bit different. So I, I don't know, but I, I would say that is one of the things that I think we need to think about is can we get eight to 10 people to deal with one, one of these topics at a time mm -hmm. or do we just although you felt like maybe that would be too much to try and do all three questions and well group. you know as i think more about that one one separate evening uh i could develop questions with the design team around the high school and it could be high school academics and high school climate and so that that series would be fine that way middle school transition could be another night and then the stop start continue could be the third night and that would be kind of the open-ended that would elicit feedback around elementary uh busing you know who knows what what uh, uh, stakeholder issues might be so i think that would that would be doable so i think i'm Sorry, I feel like we have a lot of clarifying questions, but I'm, I'm going to throw one out. So when we're talking about these community stakeholders, and it sounds like a lot of the community stakeholders that were mentioned are ones that potentially work with our students. I'm thinking specifically maybe in senior projects and stuff. Um, would they be targeted then for like the specific group questions of like, you know, high school climate and high school academics? Because I don't I don't know how much they may, you know, 
have input in like middle school transition, like their knowledge may be best in that upper limits, you know, upper classes question. Okay. And then potentially, you know, I'm thinking like if we were to involve the community or the town, you know, or, or like if you've got like the library or the rec department, like they may be ones that would be more directed at like those middle, the middle school group, just trying to think about where they may fit in better for, um, you know, the kind of the depth of their feedback. Okay, good point. What you're saying is not everyone's going to have a lot of uh, even thought about some of these topics may never have had children in the school or they may have children in the school. Okay. Other thoughts as we move forward here. Okay. Well, uh, did we get all the right stakeholder groups? Do we have them in mind? What are the six that I presented? I'm going to separate, uh, actually, that makes seven. I'm going to separate teachers from staff, uh, students. I'm going to separate three different levels of students, so elementary, middle, and high school. Uh, I think we decided, and maybe I was just pushing it this way, that business leaders were going to be in a separate forum from nonprofit. Did we make that decision? Are we comfortable with that decision? make that decision but after you mentioned what you mentioned i was leaning back that way <laughs> but okay. i don't know about the other folks Let, show me with thumbs if you support having a separate forum from business leaders and a separate forum for nonprofit community leaders thumbs on do you support that or not no we don't some do some don't hmm all right, there's enough interference here. Let's talk a little bit more about how we can come to consensus. Um, how, how should we handle this, given that we we're not uh, we don't have unanimity here? Uh, I I'd be curious um, why folks didn't want to have them separate. Because maybe I'm just being silly. I think just I don't have a really great I didn't I didn't intend to discuss I intended just to vote. <laughs> but I think I just tend to be uh, most of the time a lumper rather than a splitter so. There, <laughs> I, <love it. laughs> I, I feel I like, like we're it. like it might just be getting too split and complicated if we don't clump people together a little bit that's all okay. <clears throat> How can we I guess coalesce? I was, I was, you know, a, a flat thumb, basically because I don't necessarily feel that business leaders have, are really intrinsically going to represent different interests than nonprofit leaders. And okay. um, so, and I just, yeah. And I think a number of business leaders are in town are parents. There's, there's, it's a small enough town that I don't think anyone's going to feel left out. Okay. I'm just watching the pendulum swing a little bit. Now's your time to influence. Uh, well, I was, again, kind of the same topic that I've mentioned before is, you know, are we going to get the participation? You know, the more focus group point. we make, the more people we're going to have to be involved. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if we're looking for six business leaders and six nonprofit leaders in a small town that we have, are we going to be able to find them? and have them okay. you know be participating in it so um all right I'm, let, I'm let me maybe back a, towards it's an excellent point brian let me just clarify the business leaders would be from all three communities and likely even outside of your three communities uh, because i think about gw plastics not in your community but that that would be a stakeholder i would see uh vtc certainly is i don't know about the other two companies that were Identified are those in Vermont your three? Is another one. Okay. All right. Well, can can we live with lumping together nonprofit and business leaders? Thumbs, lumpers. Okay, we got it. All 
Are there any other stakeholder groups that we should be looking at that are not identified by uh, the ones that we've just talked about? I like the idea that Lane brought up of, of alumni and especially, okay. you know, fairly recent alumni. I think they could be really helpful voices in this. Okay. Where do you see your religious le leaders coming, coming into this? Would you see them as just community members? Would you see them in a separate group? Uh, nonprofit? <laughs> Would they come in under nonprofit? Could. And actually it's nonprofit community. So yes, they, they could. Yeah. Right. So the alumni, I think you could, you could um, lump in. Oh, but we, did we decide to lump in all the, no, we didn't lump the students together. So I would lump, the alumni in with the high schoolers. In with the high school students? Yeah, because I think they're they're going to be hopefully close enough in age that. Well, well, what are you looking for for limit on your alumni? You know, if, are you looking that at the college age kids or are you? I mean, there's some of us that are, you know, 30 years out on our alumni. OK. Uh, Lane, do you have a vision of who who fits this? Probably not as clearly as the board members do. <laughs> I I would say we want them closer in than 30 years ago because we're looking at the outcomes that that we've had over the you know over the more recent changes because that we've that have taken place i think i mean i think if we're looking at a focus group of six to eight people we easily have alumni who are you know 22 to 26 or 20 to 26 right now around randolph there so many of them are back because of COVID. it would be easy to pick their brains and i think they have a lot to say i mean they they realize what they had and what they didn't have when they got to college or to wherever else they went whether it's a job or this or that i mean i think they're probably our best resource as far as what is good and not good about the high school mm -hmm. i mean i really do yeah and they're also the, especially the the ones that are either directly in college have completed their first year are usually the most valuable um most of the schools that i was at we used to actually bring them back after a year they'd sit up they'd have a panel and have a discussion with their teachers about you know where their strengths were where their weaknesses were um, based upon the things that they were trying to pursue and that was incredibly valuable so even after this process is over i may still tap into those folks as we engage them for for, for that process okay so we're talking about graduates within the last eight or ten years okay uh, go I ahead agree, ashley i agree with what laura said and that right now I do think they're, um, I'm really quite amazed at all of the recent grads that I'm seeing around. And I really do think, um, I would love to know, were they prepared when they got to college? You know, were they prepared when they entered the workforce? Um, what did they excel at and what was their deficiencies? Um, you know, they might've been on a college track in the high school but not prepared at all for the level of homework they had in college. Um, I really think we could learn a lot. And that's a group that I think we should, and I don't know how you pick who you start with, but I feel like that could actually change this discussion, mo modify what we think hearing from Great them. Great idea. Lane, I think you have a raise coming. Good, 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 good idea. Uh, I'd just be happy to get us through the year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So when we talk about alumni, I think it would be good to have some of the you know ones that went to college, maybe some that went straight to work, and then some that have graduated college and are in the workforce to kind of get the the range of you know were they prepared for work, were they prepared for college, and then even after college, you know what they're doing and and how it how it affect is affected them okay uh, and one of the 
one of the thoughts that's always been in the back of my head and one of the concerns, um, see if I can state this cognitively tonight, um, is this idea, it, the alumni that would be really beneficial as well are those that changed midstream, you know, started off at, at college under one major and did something else or got through a degree, realized it wasn't what they wanted to do and did something else and identify, you know, yeah, you know, you prepared really well in high school. It looks like you had the skills to be successful in your first choice. But more importantly, when you decided to transition, did you have the skills to pursue a second choice? Mm -hmm. Um, if that makes sense, um, because I, I always worry that sometimes we get the kids a little bit too specific in one pathway um, so that if that pathway fails or they decide down the line, it's not what they want. They can't change without going back to uh, a, a more remedial education to get there. But. OK. And again, the design team would help us shape questions uh, in that in that vein. All right. So we now have an, an alumni stakeholder group. Right. Any any other stakeholder groups that we've missed that we should be reaching out to? Okay. Well, let's take a look at the agenda and see how we're doing. Uh, you, you see at the 7.50 time in the agenda, I've uh, presented just some sample questions, and we've already talked about the stop, start, continue. Um, I took one of your questions, uh, question two from your mission. Uh, do students have the knowledge, skills, and tools they need to prepare for the next stages of their lives? Although I think earlier tonight we said we were going to stay away from uh, your end statements. Do you still feel that? Uh, is it you're okay in that area and you want to go in a different direction? Because if so, I'm going to I'm going to delete those. Question two and three are from your mission. So if you took those sample question two and three out, are you saying that we would instead stop substitute our some of our strategic planning sort of initiative questions instead? Yes. Yeah, your goals, your board goals. Yeah. I think that's what we agreed we'd do, right? I think so. All right. Uh, you did a, a SOAR analysis, the strengths, opportunities, aspirations, and results. Would you want to, would you want your stakeholders to do that as well? Would you want to hear their their opinions on that uh, the SOAR analysis? I I just I wonder if that would be I mean it would be interesting to see if they came up with the same things we did, but it seems like we would be going calling into question those three goals that we came up with from, okay. from our work. So. But again, I felt uncomfortable making those, coming up with those three things because I didn't feel like we, I, I was like out of my perspective, which is very limited. So I, in a way, I would kind of like to see that, to see if people would have come up with the same things. But I don't know, I don't know in the process, in this process, if that's, uh, I don't know if that's, a worthwhile use of time, I guess. Okay. I'm wondering if we wouldn't come up with many of the same um, type of reflections when we have this question, what should the school stop, start, or continue doing? That mm -hmm. seems to me equally open-ended and, and sort of you know, gives the gamut of, of both positive and constructive feedback. Okay. All right. The rest of you feel that way as well? All right, good. All right, then let's turn to, and Lane, I'm gonna have to rely on you again. Uh, if you would beam up the Addison Central uh, School District Strategic Plan, I think I sent it to all of you as well, just as a model of uh, a couple of things in that that I'd like to hear your feedback about. 
So Lane, if you could beam that up for us. And that would have been in the packet to, of the material that I sent to you on Sunday. And I sent that from church, by the way. I was in church when I did that. <laughs> All right, go through a number of different uh, pages. Keep going. Okay, slow down a little bit more. A little, keep going. Yep, keep going. All right there. All right, back up a little bit. Those three foundational goals could be, um, those could be your school board goals. Although those are a bit more broad. Yeah, probably not. Uh, so a way to think about this is they talk about systems, about community, and Lane, what's, the, what's number one? It's educational success. Educational right. success, yep. Yep, all right, keep, keep going through the, uh, the slides. All right, in each, stop just for a minute. I like that graph. Under educational success, success they start getting into learning outcomes. And here might be, uh, an area for you to think about how would you measure because any of these goals you put out from a strategic direction uh, there need to be milestones and uh, in ends uh, jargon from policy governance you want to know how you're monitoring the progress of your goals and so this is one way to do that uh, and I'm not saying that their goals are what you should be looking at. I'm just looking at a format for, it's kind of planning with the end in mind, uh, a little uh, cubby focus here. We need to figure out what the strategic plan is gonna look like and how we're going to present it to the community so they know what the school is about, what progress they're making, and this uh, yearly uh, goal accomplishment is one of the ways to do that. What do folks think about a direction like this? Well, I mean, when I look at this, it's not really measuring the success of the goals. It's really just a timeline. So you're showing, I mean, when they're going to accomplish these things, or am mm -hmm. I missing something? No, you're right. You know, that's, yeah, that's not, to me, I mean, that's showing that you're progressing, but it's not really showing that you're attaining anything. Exactly right. Well, what would you all, do you have any vision for what you'd like your final document to look like? What is, I guess my, I, I, I'm not wowed by fancy things like this, um, except if, if they're good for promotion or something like that. Like, who's the audience for this? It seems to me so much of this could be conveyed in a lower tech fashion. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering, you know, who is it intended for? Uh, a broad variety of uh, constituent groups. It could be uh, teachers, internals. It could be your teachers and staff. Uh, obviously parents and, and your business community. Oh, Lane, uh, spend a minute. Yes, good for you. I didn't see this. So this is what you're using now? Yeah. Oh, I like it. <clears throat> is this on your website? Uh, no, this is, um, it was kind of interesting coming into the district. There was a lot of just general work and cleanup that kind of needed to be done. Um, and so these were the goals that based on the end that we have been working on um, as a cabinet and as a team, um, but they were never really codified um, as clearly as this. They were in a gigantic ends report, which was probably a little bit complex and verbose for folks. So yep. this was an uh, kind of simplify, you know, what we were really working on. Um, and does, does the board see this? Uh, they got got it for the first time at their October meeting as um, 
a kind of a preamble. This is uh, data from uh, a year or two ago because we didn't weren't able to collect data last year because we didn't have SBAC and whatnot. Um, so it. we will be updating the data for their November meeting. I, I love this. So um, I agree. This is the type of format that I'm used to working with with a strategic plan. Um, I don't think that we need to create a report around this, but something more, because my understanding is we're going to hold, we being the board, are going to hold Lane and his team accountable. And yeah. this is a nice, quick overview of the goal, the action steps taken, and, and the timeline with that. Um, so to me, I would prefer something more like this. Okay. And then if this needs to be enhanced for a uh, publicity piece of some sort, just to thank people for their time, you know, let mm -hmm. folks know what the goals are. I feel like we could create that additionally, but this to me is a, is a nice working document. I agree. I like it a lot. And okay. I also want to say, um, again, just with my experience with strategic planning, I mean, it is a, a roadmap, but it has to be dynamic um, because think about where we are today, dealing schools completely different. Um, everything that we think we want to have happen now with COVID, really, it's, it's not even, um, we're not even talking about that right now. Um, so... I, I think that this is a, a nice idea for a roadmap, certainly something we should do for accountability, but with the understanding that it may change. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then feedback that's coming in from these feedback groups could help to inform what you already have in place. Does that concept work for you all? Yes. Okay, beautiful. Lane, would you send me that, please? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, you know, I think we've worked through our agenda. Uh, the only thing that I just want to make sure that we all have the kind of the same mission in mind as, as you go forward is the next steps of the process, and that is soliciting volunteer feed, volunteer participation from these stakeholder groups. And I think that, um, I think I need to kind of collect the thoughts of what I've heard you all say this evening, to turn that around and send it back to you all with a direction on the kinds of questions as you're seeking volunteers, so that you're all coming from the same page of music, so to say, uh, that Lane and the cabinet are asking people with the same set of assumptions that you're asking people to participate. And I'll include with that in the invitation, what the roles, expectations, and time uh, constraints are. And if you look at the last page of the VSBA proposal, you'll see that it identifies what the design team members, what the configuration is. Uh, we did separate middle and high school parents, uh, what the expectations for those individuals are, and the same for the feedback groups, what their roles are and what their expectations are uh, for participation. I'm wondering, uh, as I look at the time frame, in November, identify individuals to serve on the design team and feedback groups happens in November. In December, I'd like to meet with the design team to begin to shape the planning process. Do you think that's too soon? Do you think December is an okay time uh, for me to meet with the design team? Uh, do you have enough time to solicit the members of the design team and meet as a board to make a final decision? How, you meet once a month as a board. And when in, when in November will you be meeting? Uh, November 12th, I believe. Let me double check. I think it's the 9th. 
a pretty short turnaround. Well, here we are, the 26th of October. Is that adequate time for you to create the 13 member? Well, not, no, not to create the 13 member, to be able to see who's interested in being a member of the design team and then come to your November 9th school board meeting and make a decision to empower the design team to work uh, on this process? I have my um, next cabinet meeting next week. Um, okay. So, you know, in our, again, it sounded like we had split this up a little bit that um, the board would work on some components. I would work on the teachers and the admin. Um, I'm happy to have them work on more than that if need be. Um, so I would at least have names and probably an in, in potential invites out um, to see who is interested. And I could present, you know, the, the categories that are ours to the board that night and say, hey, these are the folks that have responded that were identified and are interested in and have the board kind of vote them in. Lane, when's your cabinet meeting again? Uh, it's a week from tomorrow. The date is? Wednesday. Yeah, we're, we'll be in November. Hold on. Uh, November 4th. Okay. All right. So the 9th is the board meeting. Well, that, that time frame would be tight, but that could work. Yeah. How do, how do board members feel about uh, shaking the bushes for these members of the design team uh, between now and and November 9th? I feel fine about it, but I think that we could end up either shaking too hard or not hard enough, depending on whether we can coordinate our efforts. Yeah, I think okay. that's the challenge is, you know, to, to talk frankly and um, amongst ourselves uh, to find, you know, a handful. So we need something like five people that we would be willing to ask um, to participate, you know, mm -hmm. so you know it would have to happen like tonight i think because we're not going to get together before uh the ninth otherwise so we would be looking for school board member a community member or nonprofit leader lane are you going to do the the parents or do you want us to do the parents but whatever um, you're, you're most comfortable with i know the principals will have good ideas on who um, folks that would have valuable input would be in terms of like parents. Winston, yeah. uh, I apologize, I cut you off. No, 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 no. Um, and then the high school student. Yeah. Would, would this, so most of this is falling on you. Uh, so with a school board, we've got school board member and a community member, or nonprofit leader. And a business leader. And a business leader. So we have three people we need to come up with as a board. And you've yeah. got all the rest. Yeah, but, but I've, I've got, got a I've got a, a, a big cabinet that connect with a I mean between, okay. between us we connect with pretty much everybody in the community. So it'll be an easier task for us. Rachel, okay. you're trying to get a word in edgewise here. I'm just thinking I'm just thinking that that there are there are certain parents who are more connected to the school administrators and so I worry that we might end up with a, a kind of skewed design group if mm -hmm. if the principals are choosing those people. That doesn't mean it's the wrong thing to do. It's just I'm just voicing a thought that I had. Well, it, then here's a way to balance that. School board members uh, bring a list of folks that you connect with as well and compare that to the list that the principals uh, create. And then the board makes that decision on November 9th at the board meeting. So there'll be some duplication here, but it'll it it will be a bit more diverse maybe group or maybe not. Yeah, I think it would be I agree with Rachel. I think it would be nice to have some people who are not necessarily the ones who are always um always the loud ones at the, you know, interacting with a with the school officials. All right. And we remember we separated middle school student from high school student. Oh, excuse me, that's parent. We separated the middle and high school parents. So we're looking. So that makes that 14. Wait, we did? 
Yeah. Good. Back together. Do we really want an odd number? That would be my question there. We have an even numbered board. <laughs> it, it, it makes for consensus, Rachel. <laughs> yeah. Get along or, so, or yeah. else. There's a little bag and looking for, right? Yeah. Those are good reference. Yeah. <laughs> I think 14 is fine. Yeah, I can work with that. And again, we're making consensus decisions, so it's not a hard and fast, you know, got to follow the law. We either do or we don't. All right. So we're so, looking for. Okay, I'm sorry. Go so ahead, I just Ashley. trying to do, so I understand. So then between now and our next meeting on November 9th, Correct. Um, we are going to step forward, each of us, and do you want Laura, all of us to bring forth our ideas, we'll review those and pick from that idea to then invite to that meeting, or are we going to do that now? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't, and it's, you know, it'll be awkward to do it in open meeting as right. well, you know, because we're talking about individuals and I, I, you know, I don't think we can really talk frankly um, about, you know, personalities and characteristics and things you like that. You could throw it into executive session, and then when you come out of exec executive session, after you've decided on the 13, just do your vote. I mean, that, would, I, yeah. that, would, that would be helpful. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think if we each thought of one or two people that would we think would be likely to, to be interested in participating and would really add something to the group, maybe then we could come up with a good team. I don't know. Does that make sense? But are we putting feelers out? I mean, are we saying to these people, would you be interested, not actually inviting you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's it, not, we're not just bringing a, a list of names, but we're actually, okay, soliciting interest. Right. But, but you need to be very specific for them to understand that they're not in yet, that they're on a list, and we're going to try to have as diverse a group as, as is possible. I think it would be helpful to do some brainstorming on people we might ask as far as the boards section. I think that might be helpful to do together tonight. So, so that we have kind of a coherent plan moving forward so okay. we can approach some people. Yeah, okay. that makes sense. And so we don't answer because, because this is what's going to happen for me. I'm going to be like, okay, I'm going to do this and then I'm going to go to work and it's going to, and I'm going to come with nothing. <laughs> and so if everybody does that, <laughs> We're no better off. So it. Since it looks like we're going to end a little bit yeah. early. Maybe we have a brief executive session and just talk um, for a few minutes about, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the way we're going to go about this in a, in a more efficient way. Yeah. And sort of hand out assignments. That works. Okay. So let me, let me just review what we've done tonight. Uh, I believe we've agreed to move forward with a, a comprehensive strategic planning process that is uh, that's guided uh, by a design team of 14 members. And you're going to have a uh, preliminary discussion on, on who possible individuals might be that fits those, fits those roles. Uh, Lane's gonna do a similar kind of uh, eliciting ideas and feedback from the cabinet board members tonight uh, will will uh, shape how they're going to go out and invite individuals um, those names are going to come to the board on november 9th as to individuals that uh, would be agreeable to serve on the design team uh, would you like me at uh, at your november 9th meeting would that be helpful or not what are you thinking here I don't think it's necessary unless okay. someone else has different idea. Okay. Then after the November 9th meeting, I'll get a list of individuals, their names, their roles, their phone number and email address. Uh, I will then uh, set up a meeting with them in December. Uh, that will give them adequate time to prepare for that meeting. And I'll begin to send them out information between November 9th and 
uh, say they'll get it before Thanksgiving. Uh, I'll meet with the design team a second time in January, actually two more times in January uh, to finalize the process. And then in either late January, early February, we'll start having forums. Uh, we've got about nine or 10 different forum groups now because of the way that we've split those out. So I'll, sh I'll change what this looks like. We've agreed on, I think at least three, three probes. One is gonna be a stop, start, continue. Uh, second one's gonna be around high school and uh, academics and climate. And the third one's gonna be around middle school. Does that seem, does that seem to capture the feedback that uh, then will be helpful for the board to begin to shape that strategic plan? Okay, thumbs. All right. Just I a think, quick question. Um, yeah. About how much time do you think a design team member will need to commit to be, you know, an active member of that team? Uh, designed, okay. It will be eight meetings from January, and excuse me, from December through May. So uh, one meeting a month, then a couple of months, there'll be maybe a couple of meetings. Uh, okay. Each meeting, generally not more than two hours. There might be some work outside of the meeting, uh, but I will, I will frame out a process that tells them exactly how many meetings uh, that they're committing to and the month that those meetings are in, they'll all likely they're all going to be virtual meetings. So you can be anywhere in the world and still still participate. Uh, the number of meetings. They don't, have to, they don't commit to being part of the feedback forum then. Design no, they do not. In fact, it's better if they're not because we want to have other voices. So your design team will have eight meetings. Your forum participants will have three meetings and uh, those meetings will be about an hour to uh, maybe an hour and 10. Uh, so they're committing to really three, three plus hours. Your design team is committing to probably 16 hours. And in the process, we'll bring that back to the school board uh, for feedback as the evolving plan emerges. We'll bring it to the cabinet for feedback as it evolves. And then finally in May, bring that back to the school board for adoption. And then you'll see on the next page, I strongly encourage the cabinet then to uh, have a summer retreat around the annual work, work plan based on what the uh, strategic plan provides and then follow up um, quarterly school board uh, presentations, which really could be your ends. Those could be your ends uh, presentations to the board. And then the spring of 2022, uh, identify your progress from year one and outcomes to the school board. It's critical that you don't just create a plan and just set it on the shelf. It needs to be a viable working plan uh, that you refer to uh, often. So I think that's. Can I just ask one question to make sure? So he, we finally have this ends plan that we saw last month in October. We're going to just add that plan into what we do with this design group, right? I think as I, I need to look at that to see how that's going to play, but I think I can. I can develop a lot of the focus feedback questions around your ends uh, document, and that then people are contributing to something that you you have already, rather than kind of invent something new because right. you've got a good direction there. I just need to see it. I think that right. will well, that will help us. Lane has already put together. He's kind of already put some some benchmarks together. He said, "This is yep. where we're going to be. This is where we are now." Yep. And I would, I mean, we need to kind of build on that. We're finally there. And now yep. we need to kind of have some time to implement 
because uh, we finally have something that we can work from. Exactly right. You see, I, I don't think your stakeholders even know about that. So um, that will be, what it does is the benefit of this is you share more broadly the direction that you're going in and you get feedback on that direction. Okay, the last thing that I haven't been as specific about, as you begin to talk to your community members, uh, likely some of the individuals that you talk to to invite them to consider being on the design team, not all of them will, but the ones that don't can be your feedback group uh, participants. So the more the merrier, because we're gonna need a lot of folks and we're talking the same stakeholder groups for the design team that we're also having the focus feedback groups on. So don't turn anyone away is what I'm saying and let them know that uh, we, we would encourage their participation on either the design team or the feedback groups. Okay. All right. Well, as uh, I don't know if you ever used to listen to the click and clack NPR radio show, but we've wasted a perfectly good two hours of your time tonight, and uh, we hope you tune in again soon. So with that, I'm going to leave it to your executive session, but uh, if you decide to hire the VSBA to facilitate this process, uh, we'll need a little bit of uh, uh, remuneration. And I, I know that Susan talked to you about uh, a $7,000 fee. I think my document says 6800 6800 was last year's uh, amount that uh, uh, I would be working for you through the Vermont School Boards Association. And Susan... Uh, if you decide to move forward, uh, your contract would be through the VSBA in the amount of $7,000. And that covers uh, all of my time, all of VSBA's time. Uh, I don't think we have any travel, the printing uh, we need. If you have print documents, those would come through your central office. Um, so that's a comprehensive amount. And uh, I'll leave that to you to decide if you'd like to move forward on, on uh, that aspect. Any final questions, thoughts, or issues that you have for me tonight? Okay. One thing I, I forgot to share with you early on is my wife, Valerie Goodrich, was a 25-year uh, teacher in your elementary schools, and she retired three years ago. And uh, she may have been the teacher of some of your, some of your children. Uh, so, uh, and she, she had one of your children, didn't she? Yeah, I thought uh, I thought that was so. So I, I shared with her uh, that I might be doing work with her old district, and she smiled. So that's the that's the end of the story. So thank you very much. I'm going to sign off and let you do your executive session planning, and I look forward to hearing uh, from you on November 9th. Don't be bashful about sending me an email if you have additional questions, because we've talked about a lot of stuff this evening. And I'm here at your service to do whatever needs to be done. So with that, nice, nice to see you all tonight. And thank you for sharing those wonderful stories. Rachel, you'll have to find out the uh, things that uh, people uh, told about themselves that were quite unique. And I'm sorry that you didn't get a chance to do that. With that, uh, have a good evening and take care. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. My um, suggestion so that we follow um, proper protocol is that one of you moves to go to executive session. I sent the link um, by email um, for executive session a little while ago. And then after that motion has been made, we move over into executive session just because if we're talking about people, I want to make sure that there's nobody looking in on this meeting. Uh, I make a motion we go to executive session. I second. So we're leaving and going? Yep. Okay. And so it should be in your, your uh, email box. We got everybody, almost everybody. One more. There we go, we got everybody. No, we're missing Laura. Nope. Are we? No, she's under, uh... oh yeah, I guess you're right.
What is, oh, that's because we got the event cover. We got the camera roll, and that's why that's the ten. I was thinking we should have nine. <clears throat> So do I have a motion to approve the uh, $7,000 to cover the VSBA facilitation um, of our strategic planning? So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye or raise your hands or something. Aye. aye. Okay, any opposed? No. All right, great. Um, is there anything else we need to talk about? Thank you, everybody. We even got done early. That's like never <laughs> happens with us. So thank you all. Have a good evening. Bye. Bye.